Chrysler, Ford, and General Motors are a vital part of our nation's economy. President Barack Obama was quoted as saying, the auto industry is the backbone of American manufacturing. Initially, you may disagree, but consider this. This industry contributes $500 billion annually to the U.S. gross domestic product, or GDP. The auto industry provides approximately 2.6 million jobs in both manufacturing and in auto dealerships. Furthermore, the Nielsen Company has reported that 9 out of 10 Americans claim to own a car. We as Americans rely heavily on this industry in our daily lives. Recently, with the government's help, this essential industry escaped financial ruin. It now needs to rely on the government's guidance to stay in the black. We believe the auto industry is so crucial to our economy that accountability to its lenders is necessary to ensure its survival in tough economic times. It is common knowledge that public companies are accountable to their shareholders. An MSNBC article stated that due to GM's recent financial situation, the government purchased 61% of the company's stock, making it GM's largest stakeholder. Since public companies disclose their finances to their shareholders, GM should show accountability to the government because the government is the company's largest shareholder. This situation resembles that of American International Group, also known as AIG. The government gave bailout money to AIG to save them from bankruptcy because, like the auto industry, it was considered too big to fail. The New York Times reported that the government purchased 80% of AIG stock and makes management and financial decisions for that company. All of these actions have kept AIG afloat, and we believe they would do the same for GM and the rest of the troubled auto industry. According to the New York Times, the government loaned $884 million to GM within 10 days of deciding to bail out the auto industry. It is safe to assume that you or someone you know has borrowed money from a bank to make a big purchase such as a house or a car. When you go to the bank, the loan officer will certainly ask you what the bank's money will be used for. Picture the situation on a larger scale. GM asking the government for a loan. The government should know how the money from their loan is being spent in the same way that a loan officer does. In saying that the automobile industry should be held accountable, the question becomes, how? The Wall Street Journal reported that in the bailout agreement, the companies were already required to do the following. Report major transactions, implement salary caps, comply with emissions requirements, and restrict executive perks, such as the use of corporate jets. In addition, we feel that these companies should be required to create simple, comprehensive reports for the government that detail their revenue and expenses for set periods of time. The board of directors should include government officials in their meetings so that the president and members of Congress can be aware of the company's financial situations at all times. Finally, these companies should be required to disclose all financial documents, both historical and current, to the government, because without their help, these major companies would be obsolete. We also believe that improvements are necessary in the areas of hybrid and fuel-efficient technology. The company should be required to research the current impact of automobiles and develop newer, more efficient models. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi was quoted as saying, Federal aid should come with strong conditions, such as requirements that car makers build more fuel-efficient vehicles. Congress has already allotted $25 billion specifically for this purpose. According to the Huffington Post, this money can only be used to build cars that are at least 25% more efficient than their previous models. Not only is it profitable for companies to improve fuel efficiency in cars, but it is also a way to protect the environment. When the government decided to step in and save the troubled auto industry, we feel they made the right decision. Now, the government must continue what they started. In order to do this, the auto companies must disclose their financial information to the government. In addition to the fixed terms of the agreement, the company should also be required to submit complete reports on all their financial actions. Among all the debates about the financial aspect of this loan, the environmental aspect should not be forgotten. We feel that improving existing technology and even developing newer, more efficient vehicles is essential to stabilizing these companies. The auto industry accepted billions of dollars in loans from the government. Now, it should be willing to accept the government's direction. Thank you. How do you feel about the fact that we had CEOs taking that bailout money, uh, giving themselves bonuses, taking trips, using jets to go to ball games and meet with other people? How do you feel about that? In one of an article that I read, Kenneth Feinberg, who is the he monitors the pay of all the 
companies that have taken the bailout money is actually trying to go to court to get these executives to give that money back. There's an actual thing that he said, $500,000, if you earn that or more, and it wasn't in the public interest, if it wasn't being used, that your company didn't already pay back their money, and they're still struggling, and they're still running at a deficit, then he's trying to get that money back for taxpayers, because he feels that it was not worth what he was getting. Also, the CEOs of the big three, GM, Ford, and Chrysler, when they first came to the White House to ask for money from the government, they came in their three corporate jets, all three private jets flying from Detroit. The second time, they came in hybrid cars. So they learned their lesson about using all these corporate jets and the you know, extreme luxuries that they have used, and they're now trying to cut back. So you, you did a great job of, of telling us about being accountable and having uh, income statements and whatnot presented uh, to the shareholder, which is the government. But would you advocate having a managerial role in the companies? And if so, how would that work? The president already has his auto task force, which monitors and keeps control of it. And also he appointed Ed Montgomery, who is a deputy labor secretary, to become this auto recovery specialist. And he'll have his own role to monitor this and try and help it along. So he's help actually helping like the paying it back and running at an efficient pace and making money and making profit so that they're not wards of the state anymore. Because Obama stated in his speech to um, Congress about the auto recovery that these companies are not wards of the state. They must ultimately run on their own. Yes. A big, my understanding is a big part of the, the issue is the cost of, of manufacturing and it's the health care cost that's uh, for all the pensioners that have retired and still living off of uh, now the shareholders. Would you be, uh, what's your position on uh, cutting off all those old people and letting them figure it out some other way? I think that labor is such a small percentage of these costs of these companies. I believe it's about 10% labor and the physical people and the most goes to the cost of running the factories and producing the parts and manufacturing the vehicles themselves. So I don't think that cutting the cost of retirement funds and those sort of funds would be any help to these companies. I think they should try to cut costs in other ways, you know, trying to buy less expensive parts, trying to cut energy costs instead of trying to cut the cost of the people who are relying on this for their life. I also don't think it's very feasible because the United Auto Workers Union owns a large percentage of stocks in both Chrysler and GM. I believe it owns 16.6% in Chrysler itself. So these companies, they have a strong advocate in this, and they, they will fight to keep their rights and their pensions that they've earned over time. So I don't think it's necessarily feasible. It's better to cut production and costs, especially with the new large batteries that have been coming out that can power cars and power other sorts of hybrid inefficient technology. Thank you very much. Thank you.